reading from Terror Peak by Edward J. McFadden III, due out February 4th, 2022, from Crystal Lake Publishing. He hadn't gone far before he reached a spidery intersection where the crevasse splintered off in four directions. Two tunnels with rock ceilings no more than a foot wide angled up and down. A third, nothing more than a narrow chute filled with a slope of ice-covered scree that fell into blackness. The fourth route lay straight ahead, a continuation of the current crack, the blue ice ceiling continuing like a fluorescent light fixture. Chance stepped forward, intent on going the obvious way, when a growl slithered up from one of the tunnels. A paralyzing fear rooted chance to the frozen ground, eyes flicking back and forth between the dark moors of the larger tunnels. The wind mumbled and chortled, singing through cracks and shrieking around sharp edges. His headlamp arced through the half-light, shadows fleeing into darkness. A clicking sound, the gurgle of an angry animal, floated on the rank breeze that pushed from the tunnel plunging downward. He lurched into motion, following the main tunnel, pseudo-crampons scraping the ice floor, his harsh breathing bouncing off the walls, the blue glow above a poor replacement for sky. But even as he mentally complained, the ceiling became opaque, specks of dirt and debris mixed with the ice, and as he hurried along, more dark particles mixed with the ice, the blue fading to a dull brown. The cave grew narrow and dark, sheets of frost ending in thick icicles that melted into the slick ice-covered ground. The cave floor pitched steeply downward, the crack in the mountain running deeper. The ice roof was gone and had been replaced with a mix of watery ice, stone, and dirt. Chance dug in the Meg's ship crampons, water dripping into his cracked helmet from a row of slender icicles as he leaned back, peering down slope, his headlamp beam dying in the blackness. A loud pop, like a giant metal rivet tearing from a steel support, ripped through the cave like a gunshot. The ground trembled, thin cracks forming in the verglass that coated every surface. Another explosive pop echoed through the cave as ice and stone broke away and Chance slipped into a chute like a child riding down a playground slide. He landed on his ass, headlamp bouncing in the darkness, ice shards pelting his face, starbursts of color filling his vision as the LED light bounced off crystallized snow. His backpack snagged on a rock, a shoulder strap tore, and he was again plummeting downward. Chance rolled onto his stomach and tried to dig in with the shards of broken board on his feet, but the stone was slick with water and ice, and the wood shrieked and cracked, but didn't take hold. He bounced off the wall, his helmet smashing into a stone along with his headlamp, and Chance heard the cracking of plastic and rending of metal as the light went out, and the enormity of his situation struck him like a hammer to the temple. He'd made peace with his death as he fell through the ice pack into the tunnel, only to survive unscathed, and as the incline of the chute lessened, hope spread through him like a warm fire after a lifetime of cold. The burn of whiskey, the scent of charred meat, things that made him think of better times, better feelings. Chance dug in with renewed effort, and one of the shards of wood broke away, but that didn't hurt the effort. The chute looped upward, and Chance slowed, stopped, then slid back into the hollow bowl at the bottom of the chute. He lay on his back in the darkness as he shifted, checking to make sure all his connections worked. Wiggled toes, check. Fingers, check. He rolled his shoulders as he stared up, cold biting his face, his shell pulled up around his shoulders, frigid fingers massaging his back. But his chill wasn't from the cold. 
Two red pinpricks of light appeared in the blackness above. They moved, levitated. He stared, the tapping of dripping water growing louder, his vision tuning out the darkness. The red spots grew in brightness as if advancing. <laughs>